Hey there, friends and fellow adventurers. Welcome back to our channel, where the journey never ends and the excitement never stops. Sorry, super cheesy, but true. If you're just joining us, you're in for a treat. We have just boarded our first ever Virgin Voyages cruise, where we'll be traveling from Australia to New Zealand over 14 nights. And trust me, the adventure has only just begun. In our last episode, we delved into all of the juicy details, such as how much this cruise cost us, what exactly is included, and we reveal to you our living quarters, with a full tour of the magnificent Resilient Lady ship. So grab your favorite drink, settle in, and let's embark on this unforgettable journey together. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell because you won't want to miss a single moment of our five part cruise series. Good morning, everybody. It's day two. Today, we tick off an entirely new place for us both. We're going to Tasmania. I've heard a lot about Tasmania. Not only have we heard that it's absolutely stunning, but apparently it's very similar to New Zealand. We have three days in Tasmania altogether. One is in Burnie and two in Hobart. That's right. Actually, Hobart, we have an overnight stay. So there are two total overnight stays in a port on the ship. One of them is Hobart. Our second overnight stay in a port is actually going to be in Sydney. So you can look forward to a video on Sydney as well when we venture there in a few days. On cruises, we don't tend to book ourselves out with ashore excursions. Number one, they're pretty expensive. Number two, we usually prefer, where possible, to kind of explore on our own. We save a bit of money and we also get to kind of be on our own time frame. Often shore excursions can be long drives one way or the other and it's just like a really full-on day out. There's always a lot of waiting as well when you're in a yeah. big group like that. Not always, like shore excursions can be friggin' awesome. It's just like a lot of money and time, isn't it? Today, however, in Burnie was our exception. We had heard that if we were coming to Tasmania, one of the absolute highlights was Cradle Mountain. So there was a shore excursion that was going to take us out for about seven hours today, about one hour, 45 minutes drive each way from the port. And it was a walking tour of Cradle Mountain lunch. And I think we were discovering a forest or something. Last night, randomly in the app, we got a message saying that our shore excursion was canceled. No explanation, nothing, just canceled. So this morning we went to the shore excursion team. You got it, honey. Shore excursion team and asked what was going on and they just basically just confirmed it's cancelled so we asked why and they don't know no one knows and that's the end of that so it's cancelled <laughs> i originally thought when we saw it was cancelled i was like oh no that means bernie's probably gonna be raining and windy and really bad weather but we got here this morning and it looks stunning it's pretty good yeah. apparently it's a little chilly outside but as far as i can see there's no rain it's sunshine so yeah, it's a mystery as to why it was cancelled, mm. but we do get a full refund, so there's no problem there. It's just, I just want to know why was it I just want to know why. I just want to know why. But uh, yeah, so that was our only short excursion booked for the entire cruise. We've got our own DIY stuff that we've booked for the rest of the time. So let's go and have a day in Bernie. Yeah, if you want to see Bernie, we better go now. Oh yeah. We gotta go. Gotta go. <laughs> Wait, can you just quickly tell them how good the wake was for breakfast and how much we recommend it? The wake restaurant on level five and a half was delicious. We had the, what did we have? The avo benny with asparagus, not. That's, that's eggs benedict. It was avocado and asparagus. And then obviously I had the French toast as well, so. Deli oh my gosh. If you get the chance to go to the wake for breakfast, you cannot miss out on that little Italian-y, was it Italian? Something donut. It was a krona. It tasted like a churro. It? No, it was a donut. It's a donut. It's it like was a churro donut. just insane. I think I'm gonna have to yeah. have one per day on the ship. No chance you can miss out on that. Like, take my word. Wow. Wow. Do it. Okay, now we gotta I'm go. Now. We gotta go. <laughs> no living. No, no, no. At this port, we were to catch a quick shuttle bus to get into the town centre. <laughs> Without any waiting at all, we were welcomed straight into the bus, along with a map of the city and sites to take a look at. Burnie is a coastal city located on the northwest coast of Tasmania, Australia. It serves as a major port for the region and is known for its industrial activities, including paper making, forestry, and manufacturing. 
Burnie also has a picturesque coastline, with beaches and scenic views all around. The city offers various recreational activities such as hiking, fishing and exploring nearby national parks. It's also home to several cultural attractions including art galleries, museums and theatres. There were a handful of shore excursions on offer today, but as ours was cancelled so last minute, we decided to simply wander the streets on our own and just take in the sights. Upon exiting, we were greeted with a small market that locals had set up for the cruise guests, complete with stalls selling all sorts of handmade goods. A local guide recommended that while here, we go for a stroll along the boardwalk, grab a coffee at one of the many funky little cafes, and they said we may even catch a glimpse of Tasmanian wildlife. The boardwalk is a picturesque walkway that stretches along the coastline, offering stunning views of the surrounding area. It's an ideal spot for leisurely strolls, jogging, or even spotting penguins, as we witnessed. We also got to see penguin babies in their nest at this little penguin zone by the beach. We heard that it's not uncommon to see dolphins or even seals here. After spending some time in Burnie, we can highly recommend you book a shore excursion if you do end up visiting on a cruise yourself. It was a pleasant place, but there wasn't a whole lot to do in town, and I think the true draw of this location is the surrounding nature and the activities that come along with it. Our afternoon was spent at the dock bar on the after the ship with a refreshing beverage in hand, and although a little windy, I was determined to see Bernie drift off into the distance. Thankfully though, there are an abundance of towels located here that double as a warm cloak. The following day was actually a day at sea, and also happened to be December 31st. If you're keen to see what a full day at sea looks like on a virgin voyage, then stay tuned during the series, as we will be posting a full day at sea video, so you can see exactly what it looks like. We spent this day drinking a few deluxe coffees, eating sushi bento boxes and ramen in the galley, which was very impressive by the way. Ludwig loved the sushi on board and ate it almost every day. We also ended up watching the latest Saw movie, which I still can't believe Ludwig agreed to. Scary. This is also the day that we actually discovered there was Wi-Fi on the cruise. Turns out for all sailors there is unlimited Wi-Fi browsing included in our cruise fare. This includes access to social media, email, web browsing or messaging. You can however upgrade to the premium entertainment package for just a bit extra to support things like streaming. Tonight we experience something we have never experienced on a cruise before. What would that mean Mr. Mr. Ludwig? A changing of the year. This evening we celebrate New Year's aboard the Resilient Lady, which is pretty darn cool. I cannot guarantee that we will be uh, up to celebrate the actual changing of the year. Doubtful. It could go either way. We are booked into a Mexican restaurant for dinner that also happens to be the largest tequila and mezcal... Collection? Collection? Selection? Selection. Selection selection at sea and then on the other hand we have a sunrise yoga booked early tomorrow morning at 7 30. it's gonna go one of two ways let us know down below which way you think it's gonna go and we'll see who guesses correctly oh and we're gonna go watch a comedy show before dinner so i'm extremely excited one thing i've noticed is that virgin has a lot of comedy shows which i'm really really liking so this is our first one tonight fingers crossed it's gonna be awesome i'm sure it is there's not really any comedians that I haven't found funny yet, so. This comedian. You're funny. No, you are really funny. I have noticed they've got a couple of really cute little spots located around the ship that really have been set up for a fun photo opportunity. So maybe we'll go and find one of those, snap a really cute little New Year's photo since we're finally dressed up and we never get dressed up. So this moment is a special one to cherish forever. Let's go. The ship was lit up brilliantly. There was an amazing energy all around and there was something going on in every corner of the ship. 
We made a quick pit stop at the social club to nap some candy before making our way to the Red Room. The show was fantastic. It was a comedy slash musical performance and we were in fits of laughter the entire time. Next up on our New Year's to-do list was attend to our booking at Pink Agave, which was pumping with awesome tunes and a great atmosphere. First up, I waste no time and order a spicy mezcal margarita, complete with scorpion salt. This was perfection. Not for Ludwig though. To start, we ordered the guacamole. This came with tortillas, pomegranate seeds and jalapenos. It was super fresh and super tasty. We got the agua chile, which is similar to ceviche, topped with tuna, avocado and jicama. Incredible. Of course, I could not pass up on the roasted pepper empanada. No other word for that than yum. And the dish that stole our hearts on this cruise is the esquites, a Mexican corn salad, which on paper doesn't sound like anything crazy, but this was one of the tastiest dishes we've ever eaten. It was a simple dish of grilled corn, spicy aioli and lime with some kind of cheese on top that tasted like parmesan and it was just the perfect combination. We ended up ordering another. P.S. I hope you're enjoying our plate swivels. For our main, we both opted for a fish meal. My one was a New Year's special. The blue-eyed cod served with a salt cod cake, tomatoes, olives and cilantro. Ludwig ordered a dish from the main menu which is no longer on there and he can't remember the exact details but he said he thoroughly enjoyed it. Everything was cooked to perfection and we just could not get over the super high quality. Dessert was chocolate cheesecake with cinnamon espresso jelly and sesame crunch. Wow. And the other was like a chocolatey creamy Oreo taco. Pink agave was an awesome choice for our New Year's dinner. The main New Year's celebration tonight was a live band playing rock songs in the Red Room, which had been transformed into somewhat of a disco. And I cannot believe it, but after searching and searching through my hard drive, it seems that this is the only video I took. Must have been those two margaritas. If you guessed um, that we had a couple margaritas, stayed up all night, stayed up all night, did Party. some dancing, then you were terribly wrong, you were terribly or you're a quarter right, but mostly wrong. But instead, we are up bright and early to celebrate the new year with a yoga class. Yoga to celebrate 2024, the year of our marriage. So we stretched and flowed our way into the new year with a beautiful backdrop of our next destination, complete with the deluxe coffee to celebrate before I ventured off to my second fitness class of the day, this time a group hit workout at the training camp. Okay, I can highly, highly, highly recommend the hit class. That was fantastic. 45 minutes non-stop, they broke us up into some little groups. We performed the exercise for about 40 seconds, resting for 20, and it was so much fun. The time flew by, and yeah, it was a really great way to start the new year for sure. We're now in Hobart, and it's time to explore. First, I gotta go find Ludwig. We've gotta go and have some breakfast. Breakfast today was another trip to the wake which was technically brunch, offering up goodies like clam chowder, steak and eggs, and even desserts. Ludwig stuck with his favorite, while I branched out and ordered chili scrambled eggs on toast with roasted tomatoes, spring onion, and the most delicious crispy parmesan things. What a combo. We of course got breakfast dessert. Ludwig went for the berry cheesecake while I nabbed the apple tartan? Tartan? caramelized apple, mascarpone cream, and almond financier? Gosh, these desserts have some super fancy names. And we all know the reason I came back here. Need I say more? Hello there and welcome to Hobart, officially our second stop in Tasmania. 
interestingly, we have two days here with an overnight. We just ask one of the crew and you can come back on board any time of the day, any time of the night. They'll have round the clock security. So we could go out partying and come home at 2 a.m. and still get back on the ship. So there you go. Hobart, we have no shore excursions planned. We are just going to wander around. There's about three different landmarks we'd like to go and see, including a brewery, which is apparently Australia's oldest. Very exciting. Here we go. Hobart. Welcome to the charming island capital of Tasmania. Hobart. Nestled in the foothills of majestic Mount Wellington and bordered by the Derwent River, Hobart is a vibrant blend of colonial charm and modern allure. With its quaint streets lined with 19th century architecture, lively waterfront precincts buzzing with cafes and galleries, and a vibrant art scene, Hobart is an enchanting destination for all. Here you can immerse yourself in the city's rich maritime history at the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery, or wander through the bustling Salamanca Market where local artisans showcase their wares along with local produce and freshly brewed coffee. And the food and wine scene here is no joke, as we discover later on. When we planned to come to Tasmania, or when we knew we were coming to Tasmania, a lot of people warned us. It's quite a lot colder than mainland Australia. It's a lot more like New Zealand. We checked the weather this morning as we were hopping off the boat and it said about 20 degrees and cloudy. So naturally I wore my fluffy top. It could not be further from the truth. It is extremely warm, guys. When we were told that it was full of bugs as well. We were also warned that this place was full of bugs and that we should bring bug spray. So we did. We've got bug spray with us, but we haven't seen one bug. Perhaps it's just when you go out on the excursions into the forest more. Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't been bitten yet, have you? I haven't been bitten. Ah! Oh, wow! Wow, sir. There it is. The Cascade Brewery is nestled at the foothills of Mount Wellington in South Hobart and holds the title of being Australia's oldest operating brewery, dating back to 1824. Its picturesque location adds to the charm of the brewery experience, with views of the lush greenery surrounding it. It also gives off spooky vibes that resemble a haunted house in a horror film. Not only is this brewery renowned for its long-standing heritage, but it's also celebrated for its quality craft beers. Visitors can indulge in guided tours of the brewery, where they can learn all about the beer making process from the sourcing of ingredients to the brewing techniques that have been refined over centuries. We opted for the Cascade Tasting Paddle, which allowed us to try a set of all four fresh brews. Officially trying the oldest beer in Australia. Continuously brewed. The oldest continuously brewed beer. Oh wow. Mmm, that's good. I see why they continuously brew it. Now to try the one that Ludwig doesn't like. It does smell like coffee. Weirdly good. Weirdly good. On our way back to the ship, we wandered past a sign that said female factory, which spiked our curiosity a little. Turns out that near the brewery is an institution that during the 19th century served as a female prison, workhouse and labour assignment centre for female convicts transported to Australia from Britain. Established in 1828, it was designed to house and discipline female convicts, providing a controlled environment for their labour. The women held there performed various tasks such as laundry, needlework and domestic chores, often under harsh and oppressive conditions. It gained notoriety for its overcrowded and unsanitary conditions, as well as reports of mistreatment and abuse by the overseers. Today, the remnants of the female female factory still stand, serving as a historical site and a reminder of Tasmania's colonial past and the harsh realities faced by women convicts during that time. You can of course join a walking tour here if this interests you, but we had somewhere else we needed to be. 
So now we've come to a location in Hobart called Battery Point. On all of the travel blogs I looked at when researching what to do here, Battery Point was very high on the list. And we just got talking to one of the locals. She said that this place is where you want to come to see some really cute buildings. So here we are and already we've only just started walking. There are so many gorgeous homes here. If you are a lover of colonial style buildings, architecture and cute, cute little houses, seriously cute, you're going to love Hobart, especially Battery Point. Like I said, we've only just started so we're going to make our way up some random streets. We don't really know which direction we're going in but I'm sure we're going to see a lot of cute homes. Ludwig's getting a little bit frustrated by how many times I've used the word cute since being in Hobart but that's a great way to describe this place really. It's cute. Cute. Also cute. Cute. Mega cute. Battery Point is a very charming historic neighbourhood located not too far from the city centre. It's renowned for its well-preserved 19th century architecture, narrow streets and picturesque views of the waterfront. Originally named for the battery of guns established here in the early 19th century for defence, Battery Point evolved into a residential area for wealthy merchants, shipbuilders and seafarers during Tasmania's colonial period. Today it retains much of its historic character with beautifully restored sandstone cottages, Georgian mansions and quaint alleyways. The area is home to a mix of residential properties, boutique shops, galleries, cafes and restaurants, making it a super popular destination for locals and visitors alike. We continue to make our way back toward the ship but again we are distracted. We noticed a rather massive event happening here by the waterfront. The Taste of Tasmania is an annual food and beverage festival held here in Hobart. It takes place over several days, often around the New Year period, and showcases the diverse and high quality food and beverages that Tasmania has to offer. The festival features a wide array of stalls and vendors including local restaurants, wineries, breweries, distilleries and food producers. To be expected there was an entrance fee plus you'll have to pay for anything you decide to taste inside but one of the staff out front mentioned that if we arrive after 7.30pm we'll be able to get in for free. As tempting as it was to grab some Tasmanian goodies for dinner we just couldn't pass up our already paid for and incredible food on board our ship. So we decided to head back for dinner and perhaps pop back to the festival after 7.30 to grab a Tasmanian beverage to finish off the evening. And then just a few hours later, it is cold, it is windy, and I would still suggest throwing a cozy sweater like this. For tonight's dinner, we booked Razzle Dazzle. Razzle, I oh, still cannot say that name. Razzle Dazzle. To start, we shared two different salads, an avocado green goddess with shallot crumble herbs and radish, and a fried green tomatoes and okra salad with chili lime spice and fresh chili herb sauce. P.S. This was one of the tastiest salads I've ever had. We also decided to share a few mains as everything just sounded so mysterious and interesting. We weren't really sure what was what. So we ordered the carrots with brown butter crumble, friola, caramelized yogurt and parmesan sauce. This was like a warm frothy cheesy soup thing that I just could not understand but it was delicious. We got the Nashville hot cauliflower, absolutely scrumptious, you cannot go wrong with deep fried cauliflower and the beets pierogi, complete with chili oil and yogurt sauce. Again, very interesting for my taste buds, but oh so yummy. And spoiler alert, at the end of the cruise, Ludwig actually said this was his favourite restaurant for dinner. Dessert was the vanilla bean creme brulee with berries and the dark spores, which was a bowl of chocolatey substance topped with graham crackers, marshmallow and mint. Second day 
here in Hobart and we had planned to go up to the top of Mount Wellington which is another thing we discovered on Google in our research that is something you should do here in Hobart. Apparently it boasts insane views of the town. Yesterday it was looking pretty cloudy so we said to ourselves we'll do that tomorrow as in today. Today is looking even more cloudy unfortunately and I really doubt that it's going to be worth going up there. But if you do come to Hobart maybe that's something you can do yourself. Instead we're going to head to the visitors center, maybe ask a couple of questions about what we can do with our last few hours here. We definitely want to discover a little bit more of that gorgeous neighborhood. Lydia keeps calling it Eel Bay and now I forgot what it's called. Battery Point. So we're going to go out to Battery Point and discover a little bit more of those cute streets and houses and buildings. We have heard, however, that something you must try, a culinary delight in Tasmania, is the black truffle. We're not sure where we can find it, but perhaps that's something that the visitor centre can help us with, if it's not too crazy expensive, because I have read that it is a very expensive delicacy. And you might notice I'm standing by the hot tub. We have counted four of these so far on the ship and I'm trying my best to convince Ludwig to hop in with me. If you know Ludwig by now, you know he doesn't really like to swim, not even just in the ocean but in the pools and hot tubs as well. So I'm going to try my best to get him in this hot tub later today or the next day or the next day or the next day because how beautiful does this look? So our last few hours in Hobart were spent wandering the streets of Salamanca where we found some fun lane names, Tasmania's quirkiest bookstore and a quaint candy shop, followed by a much needed caffeine hit in Battery Point where we admire the cute homes one last time. And despite our best efforts, we just could not locate any black truffle. Looking back, I can almost guarantee that we would have been able to find some at the Taste Festival last night. Darn it, maybe next time. All right, Hobart's done and dusted. We've had some lunch, and now we're gonna do something that's brand new to me. We are doing a bungee class. Exciting times. One Let's of go. the most exclusive fitness classes on the ship, the one that sold out the quickest, is some form of a bungee class. I have no idea what to expect. It's half an hour and we're suspended in the air. Get ready to see me. In a bungee. The bungee class aboard Virgin is a super high energy workout that combines elements of cardio, strength training, and aerial acrobatics. Today is the day that Ludwig gets to do a bungee class whilst looking out the window at Tasmania. Did you ever think that this day would come, Ludwig? I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> you can do it, I believe in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There was a small group of us. We were greeted by the onboard fitness instructor and promptly encouraged to harness up and attach ourselves to the bungee cords suspended from the ceiling. This was to help us perform various exercises such as jumps, squats, lunges, core work, and many more interesting exercises as we found out momentarily. This bungee concoction adds resistance, allows for dynamic movement, and gives you the feeling of weightlessness. <laughs> This was one of the most entertaining activities we've ever done together. Let us know in the comments if this is something you would totally try or steer very clear of. Well, that was an experience. That class was um, not what I was expecting at all. I kind of imagined like an aerial yoga class. Ludwig had bare feet and we came with no expectation of getting sweaty whatsoever and uh, it was a different story. Word of advice, don't come with bare feet. I burnt my little toes. What was your favorite exercise, Ludwig? Anything that bounces off the floor. I like the bouncy push-ups. <laughs> that's the one. Well, that's the Tasmanian video. Done and dusted. If there's any takeaway, you zooming on my face right now. <laughs> if there is any takeaway from this video, it's that you must visit Hobart. I have no idea what the rest of Tasmania is like. I'm sure it's absolutely stunning, but Bernie, pretty average place. I'm sure it would have been a lot, a lot better had we been able to go on our shore excursion. What was the Bernie excursion again? The Cradle Mountain. Cradle Mountain? Yeah. Because I overheard that the people that did go to Cradle Mountain got rained on. Aha. Uh -huh. So people did go to Cradle Mountain on their own. Probably on their own, yeah. Oh. 
Hobart, a different story. That is a place that I would recommend to everyone. Hold it really still because it's I'm trying, so but, I'm trying, but my, my arms are really shaky. Can we put it down? Like, my arms are really shaky <laughs> from my workout. Hobart is definitely a place I would recommend for everyone to visit. I want my family to go there. I want to return to Hobart. Like, it's beautiful. Such a cozy place. And I'm sure this is a really nice base to go and explore other things. If we had more time, maybe go and hike and, I don't know, go to one of the farms up north where the black truffles are. Because we didn't get to try one. Next time. Next time. But yes, Hobart, put it on your list. Post Bungie, we hit up Gumbay, the Korean barbecue on board. Here we were sat with four other cruisers and were promptly told by our waitress that every meal at Gumbay begins with a Korean drinking game. And she proceeded to pour us all a complimentary shot of Soyu. Soyu? Soyu. Soju. There seems to be a lot of complimentary shots going on in the ship. After a bit of fun, the cooking begins and seemingly never ends. There were noodles, there was rice, there were seafood pancakes, there were veggie pancakes, seaweed salad, crispy chicken, grilled vegetables, meats, fish, seafood, and so many sauces. We spent around two hours sitting, drinking, eating, and chatting. By the end, we were exhausted, full, and ready for bed. We've come to the point in the video where you know what to do. I know that you know what to do. Click the button, hit that subscribe, put a little comment. Again, I'm sick of saying this, so do it.